Today, I wanted to talk to you about portfolios and clarify all of the things that you need to know about what goes into them, what types there are, um, what you would use them for, at what different stage of your career you would use them, and all the little bits in between. Um, I've broken this down into three different types of portfolios, graduate portfolios, uh, CV style or kind of resume style portfolios, and a professional style portfolio. These aren't really industry standard names for these. These were just the best description that I thought would clarify the use of each different type of portfolio for you. Um, and hopefully uh, show you that what you would use one for, you wouldn't use the next one for, if that makes sense. And this should cover you from all stages of your career. So if you're graduating university, uh, then trying to get your first job and then potentially trying to get a client. Obviously, that's uh, the kind of process I've been through. I graduated uh, architecture school, obviously used my portfolio to get a job. From there, uh, worked up my career uh, with my CV portfolios and then um, tried to get clients uh, when I started my own business. Uh, now also I've gone full circle and I'm now hiring people who are presenting portfolios to me. So I've tried to give you the whole range of information that um, you really need to know about um, at all the different stages of your career that really no one is really telling you that you need to know. And hopefully this fills in all of the gaps, gives you all the information you need um, and uh, kind of just gives you all the bits and pieces that uh, you just can't find the information on anywhere. Obviously, we also have a blog post that's associated with this video. So please do, uh, if you want to go into more depth or try to really get a full understanding of what we're talking about here. Um, obviously, in this video, we have lots of examples, but we do go into deep clarification in the, uh, in the blog post. If you can make it through the blog post and the video, you've also got a free downloadable, which helps you create, I think we've given you 50 ideas there on um, how to create content for your first portfolio. So... We should have you covered on all bases. If you still have questions, please post them below the video. And I hope you enjoy this presentation. In this video, we're going to focus on three distinct types of portfolios that you would use throughout your career as an interior designer or architect. And what I really want to clarify here is that these aren't industry standard names for these portfolios, but I wanted to give you a way of understanding the differences between the types of portfolios that typically designers use throughout their career, but um, really isn't explained anywhere. So um, you'll see here that I've, I've broken this down into three specific types of portfolios and um, I've tried to uh, really define why you would use this type of portfolio, what they would contain and where to showcase these portfolios um, to to get the end result that you're desiring. So the types of, um, the three types of portfolios that we're going to discuss today are, uh, the first type is the graduate portfolio, and you would use this specifically to get your first job or position in the industry. And that's pretty much it. Um, and I think this is why it can be really, really confusing because um, most people uh, in the industry only ever focus on this one portfolio and um, hopefully you'll see once we get through um, if you make it through <laughs> this video um, how uh, different this graduate portfolio really is to really more practical portfolios that you would use for other things such as the CV portfolio which is predominantly used throughout your career to move up the career ladder so what you would include in this CV portfolio is very very different um, or builds upon what you would um, typically graduate with as a, as a really um, novice designer. And then, of course, the third type of portfolio that we're going to discuss is the professional portfolio. So this is the type of portfolio you would specifically use to get clients and not a job. And I think that's really um, important to define the difference for um, the majority of you who are just pr probably starting out in your career or um, looking for your first job, your second job, or trying to find your first client. And the differences are huge. And you'll see as you go through that what you would show in your, or what you would present in your graduate portfolio, you definitely wouldn't present to um, in your professional portfolio. And what you present in your professional portfolio isn't really what a potential employer wants to see. So, but it is what a client wants to see. So 
um, hopefully this is the video that clarifies the reason why potentially you haven't been able to land a job or why you can't find a client or um, how you can move up in your career as a designer um, and what it is that you need to present at different stages of your career to really move up the career ladder. So let's get ready. The Graduate Portfolio. The Graduate Portfolio typically focuses on showcasing your ability at the time of graduating university, college or a design course. This type of portfolio is made up of theoretical, complex design projects that explore current design issues in the industry and are designed to help you develop your skills as a designer whilst proving your thought process in an explorative way using a variety of techniques borrowed from history, theory, art, culture and design. What you'll typically expect to see are analyses and research drawings, studies and lots of process imagery including collages, exploratory drawings and diagrams and diagramming obviously because architecture and interior design degrees are design heavy. These are typically studio based singular or group projects. The biggest problem and the biggest critique against university or graduate type portfolios is that they typically only focus on the first phase of design such as concept and they rarely go as far into detail or um, complexity to um, teach you the the, the concept to completion process. So you, you rarely have um, a full body of work from construct, uh, concept to construction or in the interior designer's case, um, all the way down to install and styling. This type of portfolio is created by and should really only ever be used by university or design course graduates. So what might a graduate portfolio really look like? It'll typically have more drawings, uh, exploratory processes but the main goal is to get you to get to concept and completed designs but most university lecturers really want to see your process so your thinking and they will drag that out and really um, ask you to to draw every thought which you can imagine when you try and show that to perhaps a potential client or even an employer it's not really um, useful in the design industry apart from um, getting your final grades. So can you see that this type of portfolio is very, very specific to uh, an, an architecture and interior design graduate and some of the content in this kind of portfolio, although can be beautiful and really quite um, imaginative and creative, might not really be relevant for any other part of your career. So this type of portfolio really is created by and should really only ever be used by university or design course graduates. Why would you use it? Typically, you would be creating your graduate portfolio to get your first job in the industry. And that is really all it's ever beneficial for. The main focus is typically to design um, or show your design skills, your originality, your process, your concept and ideas and your ability and skill really as a designer. The format can be creative, but it's really got to be practical. You may need to reformat your projects to create a cohesive final folio that's suitable for interviews. Considering that your main idea is to get a job with this portfolio, or your first job straight out of school, um, the format really depends on what the the job requirement is and what they want to see but at the same time you're allowed to be creative and show your individuality and skill like I did in my portfolio the content it's really made up of a mixture of design studio projects and selected work from other subjects relevant to really fill in the gaps and show all of your skills and abilities and that is where I think a lot of graduate portfolios kind of fall down because they don't really um, see or focus on more than just possibly the end result or the process, but actually what an employer would want to see are all of your other skills and abilities that might be useful for, useful for the job. Some variables and um, uh, things that you might want to consider are that sometimes um, you can use this graduate portfolio um, to show your creative process and your design skill in the job in, in job applications or future job applications, not just your first one, but where relevant 
um, to the specific job, make sure that um, you want to fill in the gaps with the lack of practical experience um, in other areas of your design um, portfolio. So, for example, that would mean if you if you've got a very heavy design or concept design portfolio, which most of you probably do have, you'll want to go out of your way to try and fill in the gaps and perhaps try and um, and and get a real project or try and work on site or get some site experience so that you understand the construction process or perhaps the um, an install process if you're um, an interior designer. Um, a little tip is don't limit your graduate portfolio to only show completed studio projects. You've got to get creative. And if you really want to um, be one of those uh, graduates that get a job straight out of university, you really do have to go above and beyond. So remember, employers accept that you're straight out of uni and or out of a course and they won't that you won't have that extra practical experience. But if you can go above and beyond and include personal projects, or enter competitions relevant to your interests, you'll increase your chances of getting your first graduate position. Because my degree was split into two, so the undergraduate and a postgraduate degree in architecture, it meant that I graduated twice with two different portfolios. My first portfolio landed me a job, um, but the reason I landed the job was not because of the work in my graduate portfolio itself. It was because I went above and beyond. So for example, I don't know this is rare, but I had already built three houses with my best mate at the time by the time I graduated my, fir my third year of architecture, so by the end of my first degree. I put those projects into my portfolio to prove that I could draw real houses. I wanted to showcase what I was actually capable of, not only what my lecturers asked of me. I had also entered a few design competitions outside of university, um, Mainly because I was interested, um, I, but I totally loved design. I wanted to be designing every second. So I also included those in my first graduate portfolio, which meant that I had employers offering me jobs left, right and centre in a really competitive atmosphere when every other graduate was looking for work at the same time as me. The second time I, graduate, uh, the second time I graduated was slightly easier as I got offered an interview straight after my final presentation by one of the guest critiquers. So in a way, my final presentation at university ended up being like an audition, which I was obviously very, very grateful for. But when I went for the interview, I didn't just bring my university graduate work. I wanted to work at that place pretty bad because it was a really cool firm. So much so that I didn't just assume that I had landed the job because I was invited for the interview. I went above and beyond again to make sure that I showed them what I was capable of. So in that portfolio, in I, I, I made sure that I could see or that I could show them that I was able to do more than just what was asked of me at university, that I was able to draw buildings, and that I was able to detail design, that I could do construction drawings or m model in 3D. I went further than what every other um, graduate student had, um, had presented at that stage. And of course, I got the job. The CV portfolio. The CV portfolio is typically the kind of portfolio you build throughout your career as a designer. It's something you add to every time you get a new job or um, learn a new skill. The main focus typically depends on the specific job you're really applying for. Um, and it's specific to finding a job, not a client. It's kind of crucial to understand the difference. So I think the biggest mistake candidates make when applying for jobs is probably applying for too many at the same time and making their CV portfolio too generic, really, by sending the same portfolio to everyone. When I was applying for my first few jobs, I was applying for small architectural office jobs where I would be able to get a broad range of experience as a young designer. So I included things like residential projects into this type of portfolio. If I had have wanted to apply for educational, healthcare or commercial projects, I possibly would have had to pimp my portfolio a bit to make it look more commercial project ready, if that makes sense. So what type of portfolio content do you need for this type of portfolio? And what does a typical CV portfolio look like? Well, obviously, this will vary with the job description and you would edit your portfolio to suit each job. But one thing I think most people miss is that you should start building or compiling a kind of greater portfolio 
or body of work that you can edit and kind of pick and choose what content you need for each particular job that you're applying for. So the type of things you'll see in a CV style portfolio is really anything from concept and completed works, real detail, development, technical and relevant skills to the job application that, uh, that you're obviously applying for. I always broke my CV portfolio up into types of projects later on in my career, but the early stages, I broke them up into project stages because projects typically take years to complete from concept to completion. So unless you had been with the office for possibly more than five years, you weren't really lucky enough to start at the concept phase and see the whole project through to the completion. And you obviously wouldn't have luxury of presenting your folio in that way. I think that breaking um, apart your portfolio and um, into stages or into project stages is the most useful piece of advice that I can give you, especially if you're at the earlier stages of your career, because you can easily fill a CV type portfolio with bits and pieces from um, the different stages of a project. And it also helps you to see and possibly your employer to see where your skills are lacking and very clearly from um, uh, help clarify what your strengths are and where your interests lie. That also gives you the opportunity during the interview to say, I possibly haven't done a lot of construction or on-site work, but this is something I'm really interested in when, uh, while I'm a, obviously, and that's why I'm applying for this job or this position. So this gives you the opportunity to show your other skills and obviously highlight the skills that you're lacking but also really interested in. And that is definitely something that an employer would um, want to hear from you. So the CV or resume portfolio is the type of portfolio that you would build, add to and edit and refine throughout your career. So you would use this type of portfolio as a professional designer to move up the career ladder. Um, as we discussed in a graduate portfolio, you would probably only ever use that to apply for your first job. Um, and you'll probably have elements of it in when in this type of CV portfolio when you're applying for your second job because you might not have enough content to really fill um, the other aspects of the of this portfolio. Um, but again, when you're um, using this throughout your career, you would have your base for base portfolio that you would. Um, chop and change depending on the job that you're applying for and you'd edit it you wouldn't basically send the whole portfolio every time to every employer and I think that's the biggest mistake I see a lot of um, really young architects and interior designers making the main focus obviously will be the skills and abilities that you have that are required by the specific job um, that you're applying for so once again you would edit every CV portfolio depending on the job that you're applying for the format can be still creative um, so that you stand out but don't forget it still also has to be practical not everything is in the right format and you might need to edit some pieces so that uh, that specific portfolio that you're sending to um, an employer kind of has a he cohesive feel and flow to it so um, you, it might need a little bit of work and so you can imagine that um, sending um, the same portfolio to um, lots of people does make sense because you put a lot of effort into it but at the same time uh, us employers can tell that um, you haven't if this is not specific for my office and um, it's not insulting it's just that we can tell and um, it even though you, you've edited some lines out and said, oh, yes, this is for you, we can. it's quite obvious to pick that it isn't. <laughs> so really think about the format uh, when you're applying for each specific role. The content, I mean, it's helpful if it's presented by project phase or from the concept to completion. Uh, Obviously, the whole intention is to showcase your skills and experience relevant to the job, and you'll be talking through it in many cases face to face with an employer. So you might um, obviously uh, have the first part of your CV sent to an employer digitally, but you would also have a physical copy potentially that you talk about when you're face to face with the employer. Uh, these days, obviously, you could have a um, an online meeting. So um, how you present. Uh, can vary so be open to the format and um, and obviously the content and how it's presented 
Uh, some variables to note. I think um, you probably won't show every document in each portfolio every at every interview. Um, you'll only keep what is relevant for each specific job and edit the portfolio in each case. So I hope that's quite clear that um, even though you're building a portfolio kind of um, at home or um, in your studio, what you show in each case to a potential employer wouldn't be the whole portfolio. It would be edited specific to the job. One, one um, tip is to create a standard format so that you can easily edit and add to that folio, saving you time and keeping you organised. I think that's something I, <laughs> I didn't really uh, make use of until much later into my career. So um, also back in the day when I was uh, just starting out, we were still using A1, very large paper sizes. These days, everyone works uh, possibly like an ANSI B or A3. So much smaller formats, um, screen so that you can be um, read on screen. Whereas um, back in my time, we were still printing very large drawings. Um, sometimes we even hand drew and um, organizing the format was quite difficult. But uh, I always made an effort to try and um, make it flow, even if... Um, uh, it it wasn't quite obvious at the time. <laughs> I, I did I did try. So remember, you're being assessed on more than just your foot portfolio. Don't forget your enthusiasm and ability to explain your project is equally as important as the content itself. So um, talking about what you the the work that you're proud of or um, where you feel the that your portfolio is lacking is actually quite important because then the employer can see the type of person you are because obviously you're using this to get a job another job move up your career get a promotion um, even within the same firm so it's really quite important to um, you know even critique your own work and um, say well, you know, at this point in time, I've possibly only uh, still got concept ideas from university. And I've definitely come a long way in that time because I've learned um, how to detail design, for example. And this is the kind of, um, you know, information you would possibly discuss about your CV portfolio uh, when applying for a position. So to show you some examples of what um, these different phases of a project look like, because many of you might not have um, ever seen uh, uh, these concept phases, I've picked and choose some from both architecture and interior design. So you'll see uh, different types of projects here. And I've kept it quite um, early in my career. So these are really, really, um, this is typically what I had in my portfolio at the time. And I was using these projects to get jobs. So this is real life. <laughs> um, don't be too harsh because they are old projects um, and obviously technology and um, resolution and all that and design has come a long way in 20 years. So, um, but at least you'll still see uh, what uh, helped me succeed in my career. So the first stage is the concept stage. Those of you who have a diploma or university course, um, the majority of your work you will have will fall into this one little section. So what you need to do is start expanding, learning and doing what you can, maybe entering design competitions to, uh, design competitions to expand the rest of your portfolio, which will help you get a job. Typically, if you have your own content here, for those of you who haven't gone through university, you'll have the concept document for a project which usually entails some early research, site investigations or analyses, feasibility studies, concept models, sketches and early concept designs. This one is obviously an architectural project, but the process in the same is the same for interiors. So you would look at your context, you might um, look at the rest of the building rather than just the site that I have here. The detailed design stage through to technical design. So this is where you refine your concept and ideas and work out the details of how the elements of the design come together to get built. So this means you start to work with the exact sizes, the exact materials, how things join or go together, the tectonics of things and what elements really are required to make up the design and to end up as a successful uh, buildable design. Obviously on a technical um, or a typical project, um, price and budget will always come into play. So this, um, if it's something that you can include into um, possibly the tender phase of drawings, 
um, or a final construction set, then that would be a bonus because it shows you really have experience in the full design documentation process. Those of you who are architects or are trying to get architectural work, you might add another section before this one um, that deals with the approval phase for historic applications, development applications, planning, um, building regulations, approvals, and things like that. So more document heavy uh, uh, kind of content, but um, that's definitely something I'd included was, a, for example, a DA pack. So especially because that's something I did a lot of in those small offices right at the beginning of my career. I um, I could draw quite well. So, um, and I also could survey buildings really well. So that's what my employer would get me to do. They'd go, okay, Joe, go out and um, survey this building, draw up the existing, um, also draw the proposed. Obviously, the the my boss would design it, um, but I would draw up the proposed and then um, get all the documentation ready to submit to um, the uh, the council for approval. So that showed I had a very good knowledge in the planning process or the development application process. Um, and actually in, in, at this stage in multiple countries. The construction pricing um, and tender phase. You might consider including tender in the previous stage or depending on the type of content you have in your portfolio, you might include it into the construction stage because um, also depending on where you are in the world, uh, how people go about working on a construction pack, typically your tender pack, you really want to end up being your construction pack because you don't want to make too many changes. But um, uh, once the builder gets on board, there typically are a few changes. So um, the construction or the tender pack and or the pricing pack, depending on um, how you call it, might uh, be very similar to your construction set, which ends up obviously being a, a contract document in in um, uh, in the in the builder's um, contract. So just as a side note. These stages or phase names will probably vary around the world. So obviously edit to suit your location or the location of the job you're applying for. And also know that these are slightly different for the architectural profession and interior design professions, unless you're working possibly on large interior design projects. And then they'll typically, you know, be the same as the architectural stages with a few extra phases post-construction um, or during construction, if you're doing purchasing, styling, installs and bespoke um, furniture making. So at construction, you might want to show some case studies and some construction progress photos of the projects from start to finish. I think for about 10 years, I never saw a completed project. So I never had any completed projects in my CV or my portfolio. And this unfortunately is pretty typical for architects. In interior design, um, the projects are typically faster and shorter. So you might have a project that you can document from start to finish or analyze and photograph from start to finish for this part of your folio. But don't um, be upset if you you don't see a project through um, from start to finish. You only have bits of information. It's pretty typical. So that's why spreading your uh, portfolio out in this way can be really beneficial because um, you even though you don't have one project from start to finish, you can show that you've worked on different pieces and bits and pieces along the way. And of course, for those of you who are interior designers or if you're doing uh, more turnkey styling or installs, which is predominantly really the interior designer's fa uh, uh, focus, or those of you who have worked with design and build firms potentially, um, or kitchen designers, um, developers even, so doing show homes or commercial styling, or actually even window styling, then you would also have a styling uh, stage in your portfolio. So the types of things you'd want to show are, um, that you can uh, do a schedule or a pu or purchasing or prove somehow that you know how to put a scheme together or that um, you can visually explain a concept to your client but then execute that uh, physically in the space as well. I mentioned previously that I also had another section of unbuilt works, ideas and competitions I had entered to beef up my portfolio. But for some of you, this might be an extracurricular activity that you have included into your portfolio that is unique to you, but also shows your ability or skill in a particular area. So let's say that you're going for a job that requires project management. 
However, you haven't actually got on-site experience from start to finish, but you know that you can do the job. So this is where I would prove that. This section in your CV portfolio is where you can assess your own gaps or what you think might be missing in your portfolio and work on it. So pimp it up in a way. And those of you who have struggled to find work in architectural interiors, this is probably where you might have to undertake some extra courses or look at um, getting some experience or even trying to take on a small project yourself. This, um, this one here was a project I out took outside of work for a local community group where I designed and created a master plan and a future plan in order to secure funding for grants um, for future works. We highlighted things like um, local um, uh, uh, air pollution, which helped us get grants for um, planting and creating more um, green spaces in an urban environment. So this also proved uh, a few other skills that I had that I wasn't able to demonstrate in other parts of my portfolio, such as master planning or project management. So you can see how beneficial this can be to really um, go above and beyond what um, typically most people expect to see. And um, I think it's it's really beneficial to you as a person to um, have a look at where you are lacking in skills so that um, your employer you know, wants to help you because uh, we hire people. We don't just hire um, uh, the machine behind, you know, that you're capable of creating. We want to help you as, um, as our employee to, you know, be the best employee you can be so that when you're happy, um, you, you're doing the best work for us. So, of course, um, showing that you're eager and um, that you're interested in, the, in obviously, the work that you're doing um, is always going to be uh, beneficial. And um, going the extra mile definitely makes a big difference and people do notice. The professional portfolio. The main aim of this type of portfolio is to show what you're capable of in order to get the type of client you want, possibly your first few clients. So in your professional portfolio, it's important to note that clients typically don't know how to read drawings and usually don't know what the drawings are for. So that means showing them the same type of content that you would show a potential employer who is looking for your um, experience as a designer would be very confusing to a private residential client. Of course, commercial clients and developers are more likely to understand the drawing sets that you're creating, but those larger types of projects are unlikely to be something you're aiming for at this stage um, or early on in your career. And you can always showcase that alongside your professional portfolio as an additional discussion piece to win the job if needed. So what might a professional portfolio look like? Well, the kind of content does that, um, that your potential client wants to see from you uh, is more, they want to see finished projects similar to their project. And that's really important. If your client wants you to help them with their house extension, either architecturally or with the interior layouts and designs, they'll want to see that you've been involved with similar projects. Showing them your um, university cafe project is going to send them running and showing them a, you know, a teenager's bedroom probably won't cut it. They will most likely want to see an open plan space um, either at concept, construction, or, com or at completed stage. So it's really important to listen to what the client is um, wanting to see from you um, and understanding what the types of clients that you want to attract want from you. And don't worry if you don't have a completed project yet. Projects can take many years, especially architectural ones. So instead, you can show a mixture of concept imagery, such as 3D renders, plans, layouts, mood boards, as well as simple documentation. Um, if that makes sense to the project or client. But um, it might resemble um, the same project pattern as you would in um, your CV uh, portfolio. But don't forget, the, the client needs to see finished, more finished type of um, imagery, not um, your thought process as you would be showing in, for example, your graduate portfolio. So as you can see, these are very, very final um, um, even the concept phase of a project is um, uh, obviously the, just the initial ideas, but they're very, very complete ideas because that um, means that uh, the client can understand what it is that you're trying um, to show, but also your skill in, in being able to complete a design. Um, 
so what you can show is a mixture of concept imagery, 3D renders, um, you know, and it, and obviously if you have photos, <laughs> they're the best because that's pretty much what people want to see. But most of you aren't going to have a lot of completed photos. Um, and I, you know, I, I did this for a really long time. Um, and I suppose many of my, well, many of my mentees still do this. It really works. So um, remember that, you know, even if uh, you haven't got a full project from start to finish, even just showing the bedroom, um, one one bedroom Im image or multiple bedrooms or um, uh, uh, one living room, you can um, compile different um, uh, different projects and put them on plates. That's what I did at the beginning of my career when I didn't have um, projects that I was, uh, you know, full projects that I was happy with or full projects um, that I completed or could see from start to finish. So um, I'd work on a project here or there. I only did one bedroom. Um, and uh, I just built my portfolio piece by piece. So I didn't disregard even, you know, little bits like, um, you know, a, a studio or a bathroom or, um, you know, even just an image of a dining area that creates or shows the type of mood that you can present. Really think outside of the box. So... Um, even if you don't have completed projects, maybe find a way to um, uh, use your skills in rendering to show what you're capable of and how you can create a space um, or a 3D model. Um, obviously, if you can render or produce more really realistic renders, that's really helpful for a, um, a, a client. But if you can't, even just showing something as simple as plans and a 3D basic model um, uh, is really useful for a client. But obviously what you can see here is we're not showing process really at all unless that unless that is really relevant to getting the job. So this portfolio is used to showcase your work, your style, your capabilities to potential clients. And it's really important to know it's for a potential client, not an employer, because obviously um, an employer, as you've seen already, um, probably isn't that focused on the end result. Um, unless you can show them the documentation or the process of that result that really um, enhance your skills and, you know, sell those skills to the employer. Whereas for a client, um, it's the other way around. They really want to see the end result um, because they really don't understand the process of design or what is required to, um, to, uh, to create the design. That's why they're hiring you. So, how would you use this type of portfolio? You'd use it really to win paid projects for developers, private clients, commercial projects. Um, and you'd use, obviously, this content um, in a way uh, that attracts your clients. So it might not be printed. It could just be uh, a website or it could just be your Instagram page. So um, don't forget this, you've got to be a little bit broad minded here when it comes to attracting clients because um, there's a lot more involved than just applying for a job and, um, and, and obviously showing up with your printed portfolio. Here you've got to be a bit more savvy because you're um, attracting people to you and um, helping um, sell yourself in a way. So the main focus of this type of portfolio would be your skills, your abilities, and obviously finished projects, uh, because um, that is how the client really gets an understanding of what it's like to work with you or what you can achieve for them. The format is pretty practical. It's got to be clear. It's got to be obvious. Most clients aren't used to reading drawings. So the, it's really important to keep it clear and simple. If you can just show imagery in this case with possibly very short descriptions, um, that would be my guidance. So not complexity here. It's as simple as possible to help your client understand that it's simple and clear to work with you. The content, obviously we've spoken about this now, so showcasing your skills, your experience or evidence of finished projects um, relevant to the type of project that uh, you want to work on, but also the type of clients that you want to attract. The variables are that if you're asked to pitch for a project, note that that is definitely not the same as showcasing your professional portfolio. It's more like entering a design or a tender competition to win that specific project. So I would approach it like a competition entry um, and not like submitting your portfolio. So really make note of that. If you're asked to pitch for a project, it's not the same thing. 
One tip is to only show work that portrays the type of work that you want to attract in your business. So um, one thing I do say quite often to my mentees and also use this for myself, I believe that a poor or a, a bad portfolio is much, much worse than no visible portfolio at all um, because people still reach out to you as they did to me um, uh, without having any visible portfolio so I w could be quite specific in the content that I sent or that I could um, really edit in terms of what my clients saw from me um, in terms of being able to hire me for a specific job so just putting any content out on the internet or onto your um, social media pages or into um, the plates or um, however you decide to present this portfolio is really important because um, you don't just want any kind of junk out there on the internet. Remember, be open to other formats. These days, clients can really find you on social media via your website or by physically visiting a built project. So um, if you're lucky enough to have that at this stage, uh, definitely um, when, you, when clients are invited to other people's houses and they see your finished result, um, it's definitely word of mouth can... Um, uh, be a big seller. Unfortunately, most people think that um, you need finished projects to get clients. And for most architects and interior designers, that um, that's really exactly what you're seeing, especially on the internet, because they're established designers. They're not startups or students or designers looking for their first few clients. Of course, the established interior designer and architects use their website as their professional portfolio. So they're showcasing years of work and their best designs. The problem is that not many of you here have beautiful, completed and professionally photographed projects to showcase on your website or else you wouldn't really be here listening to me rant on about portfolios. So what you'll probably want to do instead is show projects you're currently working on that relate to the types of projects you want to get hired for. So you're working at building your professional port body of work whilst refining the types of projects you want to work on at the same time. At the beginning, I was working on lots of small projects or projects that weren't really worth photographing. So I was only able to take away one or two images from a whole project. In that case, you can put together image plates of an array of projects or show details of smaller items or custom made items that showcase your imagination or approach to solving problems. If you don't have examples, it's not the end of the world. Just start working on a project or just get a client. <laughs> of course, some clients still ask to see a large body of work, or what they were describing as a complete works portfolio of a range of completed large projects or proof that I had indeed had the skills to undertake the work. If I hadn't done a similar project, but I really, really wanted to win the job, I I would get written references from developers that I worked with to support my portfolio. Typically, this eagerness did win me the job, so don't feel disheartened that because you haven't had a previous project of the same scale before, which is pretty much almost unlikely that you would have at the beginning or even midway through your career. You use the resource that you, resources that you do have at your disposal and get creative to win the job, especially if you really, really want it. As eagerness isn't desperate, in my experience, it shows the client that you want the project and that you're going to do a great job for them. So be open to what this professional portfolio is for you at this time. Maybe it's your Instagram account. Maybe it's your website or in blog. Maybe it's YouTube videos of you undertaking one or more stages of a design process in a way that attracts your client's eyes to you. Don't limit yourself to only showcasing the end result, but remember that your clients probably want to be able to see some kind of end result, even if it's a concept or idea, as this will help them understand what you're creating and what you're capable of. So I hope this has clarified all of your questions for you. Uh, if you still do have questions, obviously post them below the video. And uh, if you're an architect or an interior designer who is trying to start your own business, um, or working for yourself, don't forget to have a look at some of our courses. We'll post the link below the video.